Hi friends, welcome back to Amy Bakes. I'm Amy and today we are going to be baking fudge and I'm going to help you troubleshoot your fudge so that you can make sure that your fudge comes out perfect every single time. The recipe that we're going to use is the oldie but goodie fantasy fudge that appeared on the Kraft Jet Puff marshmallow cream can for years and years and years and years. And then at some point, I think in the 80s or 90s, they changed the recipe, but we are going to use the original recipe. So let's get started and let's go over the supplies and ingredients we're going to need. So for our ingredients, I have gone ahead and pre-measured everything. So that way I can give the uh, gram measurements for my UK friends. So you are going to need three quarters a cup of butter, which is a stick and a half, and that comes up to 170 grams. Three cups of sugar, and I'm using the Costco organic sugar. Um, it's a little darker than the just granulated white sugar. That came out to 686 grams. 12 ounces of semi-sweet chocolate chips. That comes out to 340 grams. One cup of chopped pecans. That's optional. You can use walnuts or you don't have to use any. Um, but if you're going to use them, that came out to 106 grams. One jar <clears throat> of Jet Puff marshmallow cream. It's a seven ounce jar. And that's got the grams on there for us. That's 198. Um, also, two-thirds cups of evaporated milk, and you want to make sure that you do not confuse evaporated milk with sweetened condensed. And we're going to need two-thirds a cup. That is five ounces, and this little jar is perfect because it is five ounces or um, 147 mLs. And then also you need a teaspoon of vanilla, and you guys know me. I don't measure that uh, with a teaspoon. I measure with my soul. For our supplies, you're going to need a heavy saucepan, um, at least a three quart. And then also you're gonna need a nine by 13 pan. A lot of fudge recipes do an eight by eight. This one is a nine by 13, so this is gonna be a larger. Um, also put a little pat of butter in here because instead of spraying the pan down with a nonstick spray, I just rub butter on it. And a very important thing you're going to need is a candy thermometer on this one. You don't want to just do it by time or guess it. You really want to have a candy thermometer. And then I've got a spoon for stirring. If you want to measure your vanilla, go ahead with a teaspoon and this little gadget to open our, um, uh, I'm sorry, evaporated milk. So one of the keys to good fudge is to be prepared. Um, this is not one of those recipes that you can be doing one thing and put that aside and then go chop up your nuts and all that. So you really want to stage everything out before you get started. So I'm going to go ahead and get my candy thermometer put in. I've gone ahead and opened up the um, milk. I'm going to go ahead and open and peel back this little foil wrapper here or seal on the marshmallow cream. Get my spoon in there, get my vanilla open. And I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to um, butter this pan. So I just take a little pat of butter and just get in there with your hands and just rub it. You're not going to go all the way up the sides of this pan because it doesn't make that much. Um, but I just go up about an inch or so and just go all the way around and just rub this in. And just get that good and buttered. And then you can just set this aside. Fudge is one of those recipes that it's, I call it a dedicated recipe. So once you get started on it, you are dedicated to it. <clears throat> so make sure you have 30, 40 minutes um, to set aside where you're not going to get interrupted. And you can just, because just babysit it basically, because this is one that's, you just can't walk away from. That's looking pretty good. I'll just take that little bit of butter that's left and throw that away since I've had my hands all over it. And then I'm going to wash my hands and we will get started. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mix our three cups of sugar, our five ounces of evaporated milk, and our butter into our saucepan. And then we are going to heat that. Now, I believe the original recipe called for butter or margarine. 
We have a little saying here in our family, it's butter makes it better. And that is especially true in fudge. Um, it really in almost any baking. If you have, a, if it says butter or margarine, just they misprinted butter and they meant butter or butter. So always use butter. Okay, so we are gonna turn this on. And you do this over a medium heat, but my stovetop is terrible. And so I have to get it going on high and then drop it a little bit. So uh, back to the butter. Um, the reason you don't want to use margarine in fudge is because margarine has a higher water content. So it's not going to set as well. So butter, butter, butter. Do not use margarine. Um, and what we're going to do is just mix this in. Now, this is another critical stage in fudge making. Once you start heating this up, you are now dedicated. You cannot leave it. And you have to uh, constantly stir it because this will scorch and you can't use it once it's scorched. It is, you must constantly stay with this. So be sure when you're going to make fudge that you've got the time to dedicate to um, to making it and you're not going to get distracted so we're just going to let this heat up and i'll tell you a story about that while we're just waiting my husband used to uh, be a purchasing agent at a country club and during the holidays i always make fudge divinity and chocolate chip cookies and i would send it to his to his um work and then they'd share it with everybody there and so <clears throat> one christmas one of the members of the club wanted the chef to make fudge for a particular um, professional football team owner. And so he, the, the chef was going to do that for him, but he kept trying and he just kept messing up his batches of fudge over and over. He tried three, four times. And finally he just threw in the towel and he told my husband, he said, call your wife and see if she'll make this for me. So he did, and of course I, I made it for him. And then he asked me later, he said, why does your fudge come out so differently from mine? So I had him kind of walk me through the steps of the process that he took, and this was his critical mistake. Once he got this on the heat and started to, to get the butter melting and get it boiling, he just walked away. He's like, okay, well, it's gotta go, it's gotta boil until it reaches 234 degrees. And so I've got time to go do other stuff. And that's where his critical mistake was. He did not sit here and babysit this pot and stir it. And that's what you have to do in order for your fudge to turn out. Okay, I'm not going to sit here and watch you guys, or make you guys watch me sit here and stir this, because this is going to take several minutes. So we're going to go into time lapse mode, and then I will see you back when it's boiling. Okay, so this is boiling now. Um, and we just really have to watch this closely. The original recipe said boil it until it reaches 234 degrees or five minutes. Don't just go by the minutes. You really need to have it in um, that 234 degrees. This is not the best candy thermometer. I swear I'm going to get a better one one day. Um, this one's actually kind of hard to read. So we're just going to do the best we can here. But we're watching for 234 degrees. So this recipe... I've actually been making since I was a little girl. We have a tradition in our family that every year when we put up our Christmas tree, we make fudge and we watch Christmas movies. And so I've been doing this since I was a child. And this is the recipe that I learned to make fudge with. And somewhere along the way, they changed the recipe. Um, I don't know why they did, but they did. They changed that recipe. And so I had actually written down the original one because... In my late teens and very early 20s, I decided oh, it would be fun to make a family recipe book and just have the, the family go-tos all in one place. So I had actually had it written down. So this is back before the internet. You couldn't just search this stuff up. Um, so when I found a recipe I really liked, like my raisin bread and my loaf bread, those types of recipes, um, I just wrote those down. And I had those and eventually put them all together and compiled a family recipe book. So... Um, now on the marshmallow cans, they don't actually have the recipes anymore. You can go online and look them up. And I really don't even know if when you do that, you get the original one or not. So, oh, this thing will not stay put. All right, let me check the temperature on there. Oh, no, not yet. Let me 
going to keep going. Just keep on stirring. Don't stop stirring. That's critical here. Okay, guys. After complaining about my candy thermometer, it decided that it was going to break on me. So how about that? In a pinch, I grabbed a meat thermometer. Um, my meat thermometer does happen to go up. Some of them don't go up that high. So, um, but in a pinch, I had to do something and my candy thermometer is going to hit the garbage and I'm going to buy a new one. Okay. The next thing you're going to do is put in your semi-sweet chocolate chips and stir this in really good. Now, my family, some people like nuts and some people don't. So I usually divide the recipe in half. Um, and I'll just do it right here in the pan, and I'll show you how to do that. So that way you can kind of please everybody. Put that in there. And then the next step is you're going to stir in your vanilla. I'll just go ahead and measure. Why not? It's one teaspoon with a little extra. And the marshmallow cream. Now, the reason you don't want to put your vanilla in when you boil it is because when vanilla gets um, heated, it loses its potency. So you want to keep the vanilla and put that in last. You don't want that to boil. Um, another thing, if you go too hot, some people will say their fudge came out grainy. And so the mistake there was that you boiled it over the 234. I think you can safely go up to 238, so between 234 and 238, but you don't want to go any above that or your, um, your sugar. It just gets a really grainy texture, and it's very dull. You want your fudge to be shiny, and so you want to really, that's why that candy thermometer is so important. And I hope this turns out since mine decided to not work on me anymore. Okay, and now you just get in here and stir this in really good. Y'all, this is an arm workout. If you saw the video that I put out just the other day on the, um, the raisin bread, my daughter and I have been sick. We've had the flu. Woo, we're still kind of weak, so this is really working. This is taking it out of me. Okay, well, I think even with our thermometer catastrophe, this is beautiful and it's nice and glossy. So here's what we're gonna do. I usually just take a towel and I just tuck it up underneath there to kind of tilt my pan, maybe even two. Just kind of tilt the pan up. And then I dump about half of this in there, like that. Then I jump in real quick, drop those nuts in there, stir it up, and take it and dump it in this side, and then pull the towels out. And there you go. You've got half with nuts and half without and then just kind of stir this in a little bit maybe a little bit more the with nuts than without but that's okay for those of us that like nuts that works out fine all right got that kind of mixed in and leveled out a little bit and then we just let this set and cool okay this is slightly cooled but still kind of warm to the touch on the bottom <clears throat> and I went ahead and cut it because it's easier to cut when it's like this than when it's completely cool but as you can see it's got a beautiful gloss nice and shiny and that's what you want your fudge to look like so now we will let this completely cool and then we can serve it up um, one of the reasons I love this particular 9 by 13 pan I don't know if you can see this but it's got these little ridges through here um, and that is perfect cutting guidelines. So I don't know how many the original recipe actually says it makes, but this is how I cut it. I think we get about 48 pieces, maybe a little bit more. Um, and then this also has a lid to it. <clears throat> so you can just slap, um, snap that lid on there and you can store it at room temperature for several days. Thank you guys for watching this video on fudge today. I hope you found the information helpful and educational, and I hope you give this recipe a try. It's really, really a good one.
Um, if you have any questions, be sure to leave me a comment. I do read all the comments and I'll be happy to answer those questions for you. And if I don't know the answer, I'll find it for you. Also, if you haven't yet, come find me on Facebook. Just look up Amy Bakes. One of the things that I do there is I put pictures, I do upcoming videos, kind of make announcements. I also sometimes do little extra videos that, um, or extra recipes that I don't actually have videos on. If I find a really good dinner recipe, or something and I think you guys would like it I will post that there as well but it's not necessarily something that I'll do an instructional video on um, also hit that like and subscribe button and hit that bell notification that way you'll be notified when I upload new videos so thanks again for watching today we're gonna let this fudge cool and then we're gonna finish our Christmas decorating while we eat fudge and watch movies but before that I'm gonna run by me a new candy thermometer